Migrating from Skiff to Proton is difficult. I recently made the switch after the announcement that Skiff will be shut down, and I was honestly surprised at how convoluted the process was. So how do you successfully migrate your content, and is it worth the hassle? First, I want to clarify that I'm specifically referring to moving from Skiff Mail to Proton Mail. You may also be moving from Skiff Drive to Proton Drive, but the process is much more straightforward. Just download your files from Skiff and upload them to Proton. When it comes to email, I thought I would just export an inbox file from Skiff, go to the Proton Mail website, and upload it. But that's when I discovered that you can't actually import inbox files on the Proton Mail website or apps. Proton Mail's Easy Switch feature allows you to sign in with Google, Yahoo, or Outlook to seamlessly migrate your data. Or if you're using another email host, you can sign in with IMAP and Proton will transfer all of the data from the server. The problem is that Skiff doesn't support IMAP. As part of its unique approach to security, your encrypted emails can only be accessed via their apps. Skiff allows you to export an inbox file, but in order to upload it to ProtonMail, you need to download Proton's Import Export app for Windows, Mac, or Linux. I downloaded the app, and when I tried to upload the inbox file exported by Skiff, it was just grayed out in Finder. I'm not sure if something is wrong with that particular inbox file, or if it's a bug with the import app, but after multiple repeated attempts, I could couldn't get it to work. So if you're able to successfully import the inbox file with the app, hopefully that will be the end of your migration process. But if you had the same experience as me, you have a few options to proceed. The first would be to download ProtonBridge and connect your ProtonMail account to a third-party email app like Spark or the default mail apps in Windows or Mac. Then, you can try importing the inbox file in your email client, and it will be uploaded to Proton servers through Proton Bridge. This is a viable method to migrate your data, but I didn't like the idea of setting up another app just to move my data to ProtonMail. I'm planning on checking my email with the official ProtonMail apps, so the fact that I would have to download Proton Bridge and set up a third-party email client just to import my emails was not appealing. So, if you can't utilize the inbox file from Skiff, you're basically basically left with one option, export individual emails as EML files and upload them through the Proton import app. To do this, you can select a group of specific emails in Skiff and right click them to export them as individual EML files. Except there's one big problem. If you have a lot of emails in any one folder, whether it's your inbox or archive folder, it can be a challenge to select all of them. Unlike Gmail or other email apps, there's no way to truly select all of the emails in a folder. You can check the master checkbox at the top of the folder, but that only selects the emails that are currently displayed on the page. And Skiff doesn't display all of the emails in a folder if you have hundreds or thousands of them. They also don't tell you the total number of emails in the folder or split it into pages. This means that your only choice to make sure that you've loaded all of the emails in the folder and selected all of them is to scroll and scroll and scroll until you've loaded all of them. And if you're willing to sit here and scroll until you reach the bottom of the page, then you can use that master checkbox at the top to select all the emails, but it's just not a reassuring way to definitively know that you're getting all of your emails. And once you do this, you'll then have to import EML files one folder at a time and rebuild your folder structure at ProtonMail. This is exactly what I chose to do, but to be honest, I didn't have that many emails in my Skiff account since I just started using it last Last year. I just transferred the bare minimum that I knew I wanted to preserve and that made it quicker for me. But as you can see, the process of migrating from Skiff to Proton is not an easy one. And honestly, I think that's mostly on Skiff. I wish Proton let you upload inbox files from the main Proton Mail apps, but the import app gets the job done. I'm unclear on whether the import app is broken and can't accept any inbox files, or if it's just the inbox files that Skiff is exporting, but based on the less than amazing export process at Skiff, I wouldn't be surprised if Skiff is to blame for the issue. Either way, you may have to get creative to migrate your data, and you'll want to double check everything once it's set up and make sure that all of your critical emails were successfully transferred. You should also double check that you're subscribed, and if you're not, hit that subscribe button and click the bell. It's free, and you'll be the first to know when I release new videos. After you migrate your data, you'll want to set up email forwarding if you use an at skiff.com email address. To do this, open Skiff Mail and go to the settings screen. Go to the forwarding tab and click the add button, and after authenticating your account, enter the email address that you want mail to forward to. Skiff will support mail forwarding through February 2025, when at that point, you'll have to 
make sure you've updated your email address on all of your accounts. If you are using a custom email address at Skiff and want to use the same domain with ProtonMail, you'll have to add the custom domain in Proton and update your domain's DNS records. In ProtonMail, go to Settings and look for Domain Names and click Add Domain. First, you'll have to add a TXT record to your domain's DNS to verify ownership. After this, enter the email address you want to use with your domain, then you'll need to remove the DNS records from Skiff and add the new ones Proton gives you. It's important to make sure all of the Skiff records are removed to prevent a conflict. Skiff should have two TXT records, one MX record, and two C names to be removed. After you swap out the DNS records, give your email a test and try emailing it from another account. Verify that you receive the email in ProtonMail and reply from ProtonMail as well and check your alternate account and make sure you got the reply. As long as both tests work, you're good to go and you've successfully switched your DNS from Skiff to Proton. If you're having any trouble configuring your email, I'm always available to help in my Discord server. You can also get help from other members of the community and it's free to join, so I'll have it linked below if you're interested. As you can see, this migration process is a bit of a headache and it has many users wondering if it's even worth it to make the switch to ProtonMail. The Skiff shutdown damaged user trust in alternative email platforms significantly. That is to say, users trusting smaller email providers instead of relying on Google or Microsoft. If you used Skiff with a custom domain, the data migration is a bit of a hassle, but other than that, it's not so bad since you don't have to change your email address anywhere. But if you used an at skiff.com email address, this is a serious nightmare. Now you have to change your email address across dozens or even hundreds of accounts by February. When I left Gmail and started my email privacy journey with Skiff, I knew I was in for a years long process of slowly switching my email address one by one in accounts as I came across my old email in various places. But I was perfectly okay with this because I knew my Gmail account would be around forever. I'm not worried about my Gmail account suddenly disappearing one day. I can take as long as I need on the transition and if I need to reset my password on an old account that still uses Gmail years down the road, I still have a way to receive that reset password email. But everyone who placed their trust in Skiff and went all in with an at skiff.com email is now in a difficult position with a ticking clock. You need to change your email across all of your accounts, and if you don't accomplish this by the cutoff, you may potentially get locked out of an account down the road if you can't receive a reset password email. All of this begs the question, should you even bother switching to ProtonMail or any privacy-focused email service, or should you just go back to Gmail or Outlook for its guaranteed reliability? Well, I think the bigger lesson we can learn here is that you should only use a smaller email provider if you're willing to invest in a domain and have a custom email address. For me, the Skiff shutdown was nothing more than 30 minutes of hassle to migrate my data and switch over the DNS records, and I haven't thought about it since. When you have a custom domain for your email address, you are in control. You are the one who decides if and when that domain gets sunset. And if your current email provider gets shut down, you can just migrate your data to a new provider and not lose any sleep. So would I recommend using a private email provider if you're gonna use a free at proton.me or at tutanota.com email? Honestly, no. Unless you're using this email address strictly for PGP communication with individuals that you can reach via other means, I wouldn't trust it. I certainly wouldn't trust it to be the email address you use for account logins. But if you are willing to invest in a domain name and a paid account to connect that domain name, I think these services are still worth using. For me, the reason I switched to Skiff in the first place was to get away from Gmail. I knew Gmail had dependability and reliability no one could beat. I knew I was trading that reliability for a less stable provider in exchange for added privacy and security. And that's a trade-off that's worth it to me. I even said in the video where I set up Skiff that I was using a custom domain to make the transition to the next email host easier if Skiff shut down. And while I didn't expect that day to be here this soon, I'm glad I planned for it and I'm happy it was such a smooth transition. And as for the longevity of ProtonMail specifically, they've been around since 2014 and started through community funding. As of 2022, they don't have any VC investors, and that means they are much more in control of the future of the company. So given Proton's history, I find it highly unlikely they are at high risk of shutting down anytime soon. But regardless of any of these facts, I can't stress enough that you need to be using a custom domain if you're going to rely on these services. ProtonMail is my preferred alternative to Skip, but if you want to hear my thoughts on the best alternatives for each use case, you can check out that video here.